Well, I'm finally finished upgrading my Robo 3D R1. It's ready to go and I'm about to show you all of the upgrades I've done. First things first, I changed out the spool holder I had. Originally I had the one that said if the spool is turning, then you're doing it right. And it was okay design, but I like this one a lot better. Mainly because you can just reach into this design, turn, and then pull it out, and then take your filament off. And I like that a lot more, plus I can actually fit two on here real easily. And now those are off. If we go around to the bottom, we can see that I have these 3D printed feet. Now, the reason why I put these on here is because it changed the way the airflow works. And because it changed the way the airflow works, I needed the bottom to be more exposed. So currently right now, I'm taking just a regular Phillips screwdriver and I'm gonna undo all four bolts around the printer and I'm gonna show you what I've done to the inside. So I just removed all of the screws from the side and a quick tip when disassembling the printer, one of the easiest place to put your screws is right here on the magnetic bed if you have an R1. Now that the screws are off the side, the next thing I need to do is change out this. So all I have to do is reach in here and I didn't secure this entire belt. I just did everything except the first link on this one. So I can disassemble that. Then I go up here and then we, all I have to do is reach in and grab the Z-Rod and pull this out. Same on the other side, just pull this out. And in the middle of the yellow black wire down to the blue and gray, all I have to do is just undo these. And now the top is ready to pop off. So now that the printer's in a more exposed state, you can see what I've done more to the internals. I have installed these removable Z stabilizers. These can be put into the Z axis without having to actually be fixed to the platform. And so the connector looks like this inside the printer right there, it locks the Z-Rods in place, much better than the old Z-Stabilizers I had. And of course, the fan duct that I've been redesigning, I have the V6 E3D print head in there. You get a nice picture of that one. It's a little dirty because I haven't cleaned it yet, but that is probably the best thing that I've done to this printer. And I think it's the only thing I purchased. So when you get an E3D print head, you get some material to use for Bowden tubes. If I can grab mine. Yep, there we go. So I've created a guide tube that goes all the way down to the heater core. And this pretty much bypasses the bearing that's in the back that you would usually roll. And it just grabs the filament and pushes it right into the extruder. So the main reason why I installed the guide tube was so that I could use flexible filament, which leads me to my next upgrade, which was a 3D printed belt. So this is not the belt that came with the printer. This is a belt that was printed in Polyflex, and it works very well. And I just secured it with zip ties onto the new X carriage. Now the reason why I printed a new X carriage is because this X carriage has this little extension that holds this wire chain in place. I ran all the wires into this zip tie right here and from the zip tie it goes around this block and the extruder carrier. And around the back, all the wires meet up in this one spot and then follow the path down the X, or sorry, down this wire chain and come back up here and they go down into the printer. So what I've just done is I put all the screws on the side because I'm about to go tip this printer on its side so I can show you what I've done to the wiring. So the original fan that was in here was a high CFM fan and I put that on the printer as one of the dual fan ducts. And so then I replaced this with another 40 millimeter fan, not as high CFM, but I flipped it around so that it was actually pulling air out onto the bottom. That's why I put the risers on there. Inside the printer, I put a much larger, I wanna say that this is a 50 mil, if not a six, no, this is a 60 mil, it has to be a 60 mil. So I put a 60 mil that blows directly onto the ramps itself, and then, because this is all closed, this pulls the air out. So you have 
constant flow this way and then it gets pulled out this way so you constantly have intake and then an exhaust of all the hot air that comes out of this and the only thing I've really done is just manage where the wires go on this so I can you know see where everything's going I pretty much just looped a few things back and forth and then tied them all off together so it's nice and secure and then I ran everything else that goes to the other axes over this way but I zip tied everything I think there's like 16 zip ties under the printer holding it together but it looks a lot better than what it came out of the factory with rewired this making it longer so I could actually because this is where it used to be so as soon as you got to this distance right here this would just pop out and so there was really no reason for that but that's how nice and pretty it looks under here and I'm going to turn the printer over and show you how that X carriage moves back and forth. So once again, I put the screws back together. Now I'm going to flip it back over and put its feet back on, which are right here. You've seen everything that the printer has put together right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble it and I'm going to show you how easy it is to really put it back together. And that was the reason why I wanted this design to be the way it was because the original Z stabilizers, they didn't come apart. So I had to rip the 3M mounting tape off every single time I had to take it apart, which was very tedious. So first, all you have to really do is just grab the top case. And the way that I have mine set up is like this so that the cable for the lights inside. But all I have to do is just put this on here, make sure the wires don't catch on the sides. Whoop, don't lose your screws either. Alright, so after you get here, just kind of tap it all in place. So when I get here, what I usually do is that I put the lights in first so I can see what I'm doing. Yellow to blue and black to gray. Now my lights are on. After I do that, I go inside and I put both the Z stabilizers in. And that one's locked in place. And... That one's now locked in place. So now the Z axis or the Z rods can't move all that much because the stabilizers are in place, but the stabilizers are removable. So if I need to maintenance the printer, I don't have to rip off the 3M mounting tape or undo screws. The 3M mounting tape's holding the brackets in place, and then the actual stabilizer itself is holding the bracket. After I get this far, I go inside and I take the the wire carriage essentially. And the end of it is also supposed to be screwed on, but I used 3M mounting tape again. And all you have to do is just pop the, uh, the pieces in place because there's a small little bubble that all the circles fit into. There's like a concave and a convex circle to each one of these links. And so they all just form together. And the reason why I did the last one, and I cut, I cut the last one so that it wouldn't be a complete link. So I could, of course, take the printer apart because I want to be able to take this apart as easily as possible. But after I just kind of reach in here, add just a tad of pressure, and pop that in place. Now that that's rocking all together, and that's why I love that. Like it, it, it keeps it in such a nice position so that there's no tangling of any sort inside the printer. If everything's good now, I just got to put my spools back on. I just put these on here, hold both of those in place. And bam. And of course, I'm going to stop the recording. I'm just going to put the screws back into the sides. And then I'll show you what it looks like moving around. All right, so with all the upgrades, I just kind of wanted to show you what the cable management really looks like when it's moving. And that is probably one of my favorite upgrades. So I'm going to run a G28, which is a homing command. All right, so now I just set the feed rate at 30,000. So that allows me pretty much to move as fast as I possibly can. I'm gonna raise the Z-axis by five millimeters. And I'm gonna move from X0 to X230. And you can just see how perfect that wire management just stays nice and curled in there. And I mean, I can hop back and forth between these two. And it's never going to get tangled. And the best part is, is that the higher I go, the more that cable management helps me out. 
So let's go back to the middle. And I'm gonna go up to Z100. And now I'm halfway up the printer. And being halfway up the printer, I can still move very freely between these two extremities. And I mean, that's all you really go for anyways. You don't go very far in either direction on the x-axis because the x-axis moves back and forth while the y-axis moves. Now, one of the main things that I had a problem with is when I started to get really high in the bed. I was having problems with zeroing because the wire was getting in the way. But I mean, if I go to the middle right now and I go all the way to Z200, and because of how high it is in the printer, the camera is on the floor right now being pointed up at the printer. And watch as I still move to X0 and 230. It's perfect. And I can even zero from here because the wire's not getting in the way. Amazing, isn't it? So originally I was going to actually document the entire process of me extruding all the objects, assembling everything together, but when I realized how much time I was actually spending doing all of this, I realized there was no way I was going to fit this all into a small video. So I just decided to make one video of all the upgrades I've done after I finished. And now that I'm done with all of the crazy hardware upgrades, I can show you what I do with the software, how I prep the printer, and then I can finally start having fun and actually extrude and go wild with all these crazy designs and all these crazy prints. But I really hope you like everything that I've done with the printer. All the links to every single thing that's on the printer in order of how it shows up in the video will be in the video description down below. In order, like I said, with or how it was presented in the video. And next video is going to be all the software modifications I did along with firmware and prep. I really hope that you take these recommendations on how to put your R1 together, you apply them to yours, and I think you've seen them in the previous video, but yes, my glasses are 3D printed. These are the ninth ones that I've created. I've had black, clear, I'm about to make some red ones, but I broke the frame to my glasses and my 3D printer came through. Like I said, I hope you like what I've done with my printer. And you take my word for, or, and you take my recommendation for it. But I love the R1. The Robo 3D R1 is the best bang for buck printer you can get. And you know what? I've had small problems here and there, but I haven't even spent a thousand dollars on the printer. And I, and I'm getting great results. It's upgrading itself. I haven't needed. It, I I haven't done anything to it. Well, I've done a lot to it. But you don't have to do anything unfeasible to the printer to make it print well. You just need to do a few modifications and you can get it printing perfectly. 